in this video we'll get into some more in detail ebgp configurations like in that we'll see how to configure ebgp using the loopback interfaces now this is something similar to ibgp using loopbacks uh, if you remember previous scenarios in our previous scenarios we have seen some of the basic bgp configurations where we have configured ebgp between uh, any two pieces like here between router 2 and router 3 we just need to go to router bgp and then whatever the as number 500 and simply we configure a command called neighbor the neighbor address 2.2.2.2 .2 and then simply remote as and whatever the remote is 600 so when my as number and the remote as number are different automatically the router understands it has external bgp neighbor now there's something uh, very basic configuration if you have only one exit path between the two routers but when you have multiple exit paths like this example here now in this scenario if you see I got multiple exit paths between the two routers now I want to make sure that router A should form EBGP pairing with router B now for that either I can use any one of the connector interface I can configure the neighborship with 192.168.1.18 or whatever the address over there or I can use this address but the problem with the physical interface is the physical interface can go down any time so again I cannot configure two BGP neighbors because for the same name from the same router because anyway it will exchange both the routes so instead to provide redundancy between them we use something called loopbacks so in order to provide the redundancy in the eBGP neighborship we are not going to use any of the physical interfaces performing the neighborship instead we establish the neighborship between loopback to loopback interface which will never go down so we're going to configure an ebgp pairing between loopback to loopback and the commands are similar more like what we did in our ibgp using loopbacks so the first command we had to say let's say on this router we had to say neighbor 1.1.1.1 remote as is 65101 so my AS is 65102 and the remote AS is 65101 which ensures that it's a EBGP neighbor and then whenever you are forming the neighborship with any interface other than exit because by default the exit interface will be the source address but we need to ensure that we change the source address to our loopback address so for that we have to use a command called update source command so these two commands are same commands which we used in our IBGP using loopbacks if you remember in the basic labs we did that now the same thing we need to do for EBGP also we had to use a remote AS command but the only difference is the remote AS number will be different from our own AS number and the second thing we are going to use update source command as well and when you configure EBGP peering you need to add one more command that is EBGP multi hop now this command will ensure that because by default the default TTL value of every EBGP peer is only one hop so which means in order to form EBGP neighborship the neighbors has to be directly connected that is a default TTL value we can say of any external BGP neighbor so IBGP neighbors no need to be directly connected but when you configure EBGP neighbors they has to be directly connected and the reason for that is the default TTL value so now if you see here router A is going to form the neighborship with router B with router A is going to form the neighborship with router B here and it is not one hop away because if you see one hop will end here so but this loopback is more than one hop so we need to ensure that we increase this TTL value so in to increase this TTL value we need to say we need to add one more command called EBGP multi hop and with any number you can use if you don't give any number the default hop it will take as 255 but you have to define any number other than uh, one because uh, one anyway we don't need we need more than one so anything two or more than two or if you don't give any number default hop it supports 255 so so always remember one thing whenever you configure IBGP using loopback interfaces like we did in our second lab in the basic neighbors lab we need to add two commands we need to use remote AS 
and then we use update source command it's mandatory for you to change the source address and when we configure ebgp using loopbacks we need to use three commands remote as same like ibgp and also we need to use update source because we are not using the default exit interface instead we are pairing with a loopback interface and the third command will be ebgp multi hop so this is mandatory in order to have ebgp neighborship now once we configure this the next thing is so these are the three uh, set of commands which we discussed just now but now the question is loopback to loopback reachability now uh, this is a major concern between in order to form the neighborship because we did some basic troubleshooting in our ibgp labs internal bgp labs in order to have a neighborship the first and the foremost requirement they should be able to reach each other now in order to provide the reachability you can either use any of the dynamic routing protocols or you can use any of the static routing so now here as in the real scenarios between the two different days we generally don't use dynamic routing protocols but still that is one possible solution which you can do it to form the neighborship between these two routers or you can have a reachability between these two by using a static routing which is the more common and more recommended scenario when to provide a reachability between the two or more different autonomous system numbers so the loop back to loop back reachability we are going to say ip route in our scenario on the router a we are going to provide reachability to this loop back which is router b loop back via next hop address 192.168.1.18 this is the first and to reach the same loop back we are going to provide the second route which is using the next hop this one in the same way reverse also we are going to do the same thing from router b to this loop back from router b to this loop back via two different next hops now when you don't define anything by default they use they do load balance or you can even define some different administrative distance for different routes so that it should prefer the primary route if the primary fails it should go with the backup route so this is something we need to configure if you want to have ebgp peering between the loopbacks so let me demonstrate the same thing we'll try to verify the same lab uh, practically i got one a small lab for verification we'll try to implement that lab and we'll uh, see uh, some basic verification relating to these things so now here in my lab i already have my gns set up with two routers and they already started and they are already pre configured with this ip addressing exactly according to my uh, lab here so i'm going to use this diagram here the same diagram a uh, similar diagram i can say with a different ip addressing and already i have the console screens ready here but except the basic ip addressing now if i give show ip interface brief now router 1 is pre configured with both of the serial interfaces which are using 1.1.1.1 and 2.2.2.2 ip addresses uh, whatever listed in the diagram and similar way if i go to router 2 i have my router 2 also pre configured with this ip addresses exactly as per the diagram so so these ips are similar to my default topology but you have to make some slight changes to this uh, adjust just slight changes to the default topology to make this uh, lab to work on this lab so so those things i already did so i'm um, so you know how to do the basic ip address configurations and if i verify show ip protocols i don't have a single protocol running so i'm going to do the configuration from the scratch from the basic except the ip addressing uh, we don't have anything configured so let us start with router bgp so i'm going to say router bgp 500 router 1 belongs to 500 and then i'm going to say neighbor 1.1.1.2 i'm not peering with physical interfaces if i want i can peer with 1.1.1.2 or 2.2.2.2 instead i'm going to use the loopback interface of router 2 which is 12.001 which is pre configured and then i'm going to say remote as is 600 so remote as is 600 router 2 is in as 600 and whenever we use whenever we configure ebgp or ibgp peering using any interface other than exit 
it's mandatory for you to define or change the source address now here I'm going to use loopback to loopback so I'm going to say loopback 0 is my source address and I'm going to give one more command abgp multi hop now we can define the maximum hop count the default it will take to 55 so I'm just leaving it to default or you can just give any number two or more than two works in our scenario so next thing advertisements I'm going to advertise my 10 dot network uh, 1 dot network 2 dot network it's up to you just to advertise LAN and WAN interfaces and then no auto summary no synchronization the same thing I need to do on the router 2 as well I'll go to my router BGP 600 router BGP 600 and then I'm going to say no auto summary no synchronization neighbor appearing with 11.001 and then remote AS will be 500 that is my router 1 and then I'm going to say update source low back 0 and then I also need to add eBGP multi hop command so you can try this lab without giving this command you will not see the neighborship will come up so neighborship will never come up unless and until you define this command for eBGP if you are using any interface other than exit interface because of the TTL value uh, it supports just uh, one TTL value so this point I even mentioned in my workbook if you just go to my workbook here I have configured the same commands so BGP eBGP multi hop command this command increases the default one hop for eBGP piece. It allows the routers to uh, eBGP loopbacks which will have a hop count of more than one. So the same thing I'm going to do and then advertisements. Advertising my LAN interface and advertising my WAN interfaces. These things done. So now if I verify show IP BGP summary you can see the neighborship is active means it is actively trying to form the neighborship but not forming so the first step of troubleshooting always ping to that neighbor IP address so both the neighbor IP addresses through which you are forming the neighborship has should have the reachability so reachability is not there because I did not configure any routing protocol except BGP here so now to provide reachability what we are doing is we are going to use static routing now you can also use dynamic routing it's up to you so always remember one thing uh, you can also use dynamic routing in this scenario but in as they are in different areas I'm going to use static route so I'll configure a static route on router 1 for the loop back which I which I'm using 12.000 it's slash 24 subnet mask and the next hop I'm using 1.1.1.2 will be my next hop and for the same loopback I'm going to say one more route and probably I'll change the administer distance to 10 so that it can be my backup route now it's up to you you can even do use both the routes at the same time load balance or you can just make it as one primary one secondary it's all as per your requirement but ensure that you have reachability to that loopback from both the sides so that if any one of the link fails still you have neighborship between these two routers that is the main intention of using this loopback so this point I already discussed in IBGP as well so the main intention of uh, forming the neighborship with loopbacks when you have multiple links it's going to provide the redundancy so the same thing I'm going to do on the router 2 as well uh, IP route I'm going to say 11.000 with slash 24 subnet mask and then the next hop will be 1.1.1.1 and then for the same network I'm going to configure with a next hop will be 2.2.2.1 and the administrative distance is 10 so now you can see the neighborship has come up and you can see I'm going to learn three prefixes so the prefix coming from router 1 is this so it's coming from uh, 11.001 
and if I verify my show IP route anyway you don't see that route in your routing table but then you'll see in the routing table learn via PGP so now even if I try to shut down any one of the interface still it is not going to affect the neighborship because if I verify still the neighborship is up the main reason is if the primary link fails automatically it is going to use the secondary link but if I shut down the secondary link also then if both the links are down then definitely it is going to affect the neighborship and after some time you once it reaches that timer probably the neighborship will go down so if you don't want to wait you can just uh, clear clear the BGP peering if I just if I try to verify you can see the neighborship is active and the main reason is that neighbor is not reachable so here I, I did a shutdown of both the links that's the reason but as long as your links are working any one link is working your neighborship will be up so that is the main intention of uh, feeding the feeding with a loopback interfaces instead of using the directly connected interfaces